So now in this video, we're going to use the LM358 op amp. There's two of them in the integrated circuit. We're only going to use one of them. And we're going to wire this up so that depending on the power supply voltage, we'll be able to adjust the exact value a bit. But if the voltage is above a certain point, we'll have a green LED light up. Since we have maybe 15 volts we'll be working with, we're going to protect our LEDs with a 2.2 kilo ohm, 2200 ohm resistors. Sometimes you may not see the decimal point, so they take the K for kilo ohms and uh, they swap it with the decimal point. So if you see 2K2 and then an ohm symbol, maybe they won't even have the ohm symbol, that means a 2.2K. Now, if the voltage falls below that point that we set, then the red LED is going to light up. Again, we're going to use a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor to protect it because we're dealing with uh, relatively high voltages in this video. It's kind of pointless to try to compare the supply voltage because uh, it's just hard to give an input of the full supply voltage. So we're going to cut it in half using a couple fixed resistors right there. 10 kilo ohm works well. Doesn't have to be 10 kilo ohms. Uh, different values as long as they're equal value will work the same. But this will limit current nicely. So in any case two equal value there. We tap it in the middle. We get half of the supply voltage. So if we set this to 8 volts the supply voltage will have 4 volts at the inverting input. If we set the supply voltage to 10 volts we will have 5 volts at the inverting input. So now that brings us to the non-inverting input right there. The voltage it looks at is the voltage of this trim pot, which is actually going to be steady as the supply voltage changes. Because as you can see here, we got a current limiting resistor and a Zener diode. The Zener diode is parallel to the uh, trim pot. It's reverse bias. Uh, current can flow through reverse bias Zener diode safely, as long as you limit it enough. And uh, it'll build up its Zener voltage. The one we're going to use is a 5.6 volt Zener diode. If you look closely at the physical component, you'll see 5V6 because the decimal point would be way too small. Uh, so they substitute the decimal point with the V again. In any case, that'll hold a really reliable 5.6 volts. It may be slightly off, but uh, it'll hold a reliable voltage, about 5.6 volts across the trim pot right here. So if we set the trim pot to 4 volts, then it's going to compare when the inverting input is above or below 4 volts, which means the power supply is above or below 8 volts. Because remember, we're getting half of the supply voltage, half of VCC at the inverting input. If we set the trim pot to 5 volts, we'll have 5 volts there, then the op amp here is going to compare when the inverting input is above or below 5 volts. And to do so, the power supply voltage has to go above or below 10 volts. So I hope that makes sense. So now remember that the output more closely resembles the non-inverting input. In this case, it goes to one supply rail or the other, as close as it can get. So when the voltage is high enough to get the halfway point there above at the inverting input, above the non-inverting input, that'll be higher. That'll mean it's a low output. That's why the green LED will light up because we have a high enough voltage. If the supply voltage goes down where the halfway point is below the non-inverting input, so it falls below it, it's lower, then we will get a high output right there. And that is why the red LED will light up because it is going to ground. Here is the LM358 op amp pin layout. And so we need to power it, positive supply, VCC to pin 8, uh, ground to pin 4. We're going to use this op amp output on top. Right below it is the inverting input, like the schematic. And then right below that is the non-inverting input, like the schematic. Remember, sometimes schematics switch where the uh, inverting and non-inverting inputs are. So pay close attention that they line up like they do on the physical component. So here you can see that uh, the non-inverting input goes to the trim pot. We'll shuffle that over there. And then the uh, trim pot there. We have a white jumper to the non-inverting input to the middle pin of the trim pot. The two end pins are the resistive element there. Parallel to them, we have the Zener diode. If you got close enough, you'd see 5V6 on it. 
But in any case, the black band, the cathode, towards the more positive supply, the side without the band, the anode, to the negative side, and then our 1000 ohm resistor to limit uh, current and help it build up that voltage. And now we add our two equal value 10 kilo ohm resistors to the inverting input. We'll zoom in and uh, pretty straightforward right there. One of them to the negative supply, the other one to the positive supply. So now we have a couple of 2.2 kilo ohm, 2200 ohm resistors coming from the output and uh, they're one spot away from these two jumpers. We're going to take the green LED, make sure we put the long lead, the anode, to the uh, orange jumper there that goes to the positive supply. The short lead, the cathode, going to the green LED. And apparently I already have the power applied because it is lit up now. The uh, red LED, so the uh, long lead, the anode's coming from the output, the resistor, so that's up there. Short lead, the cathode, going down one row to this gray jumper that goes to the negative side of the power supply, ground. In the last couple scenes, I accidentally removed this uh, one kilo ohm resistor. Should have left that there the entire time. So sorry if that caused any confusion. But in any case, now we can see the voltage that we are setting with the uh, trim pot. Hopefully you can see it right there. Let's uh, try lowering the uh, lamp. There we go. That helps uh, quite a bit. So it is set above four and a half volts. The power supply voltage is 10 volts. So it's higher than nine volts. So that's what we expect. Now. We will take the voltage and set it to 9. So somewhere around 9. There you can see now it is a little bit too low. Let's fine tune it a little bit. And there you can see 9.1. The uh, voltage goes back up. So we set it to uh, half of the voltage that we want the power supply voltage to be above. So now I'm going to set the uh, trim pot to, uh, let's go up to 5 volts. And uh, there you can see it moved up to uh, pretty close to 5 and uh, there we got uh, 5 volts there. So if we go to 10, somewhere around 10, might not be exactly 10, maybe a speck above or below, there you can see 10 or even higher, then we have a good output. But if it goes uh, below 10, so there we are right at 10, and it's kind of flickering because when I bump the power supply, it loses a little bit of voltage. But there you can see 9.9 .9 right there, it went red. Let us know that it was a little too low. So it's uh, fairly accurate right there, if you set it up right. So, in any case, hopefully that all made sense. I'm going to end it there. Check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. If you can donate, please do so. I have links down below. But just watching videos helps a, a ton. So thanks for that. I'll see you in the next video.